Hey everybody. In this video, I have my father showing us how to shoot a, an old 1863 Civil War musket. Um, and I was hoping to use it for turkey hunting next season. So I thought, you know what, dad, this is a cool, cool gun that you've given to me. Um, and I wanted to show it off. And what better way to do that than have my father uh, load it and fire it for us to get it ready for turkey season. So I hope you guys enjoy this video. This is the weapon that uh, Drew wants to hunt turkeys with. It is a real, original 1863 musket. It is not rifled. It is a shotgun, basically. And it was, uh, the contract was let to a New York company by Springfield. So it is a Springfield model 1863. And it is a 20 gauge. And it was probably used for foraging by the, uh, somebody in the company had one to go shoot squirrels and such when they got hungry or it could have been used by an artillery unit as a last defense, because by the time the artillery was being attacked, the bad guys would be upon them. So it was probably used in those two ways. This gun has been shot quite a bit over its life. If you look very, very closely at the bolster, it is heavily pitted from having shot so many rounds. And while we have it here, I'll show you the lock plate. It was contracted by uh, this company, uh, E. Robinson. Uh, G. Ro e. Robinson out of New York, and it is an 1863. Yeah, and the, the barrel says 1863. Yeah, and it, it says so 18, 1863 on yeah. the top, right. terribly pitted. Very pitted, uh, but so, you can see it barely. Yes, very right, and it, uh, but it's got all the original sights, the butterfly sights, the whole nine yards. It's all just, it, it's what it is. Mm -hmm. And uh, so what Drew has asked me to do is to show him how to load the weapon so that he can hunt a turkey with it. So I'm gonna let Drew reset real quickly and we'll get down here to what we need to load it with. The items needed to load this are the primers. That is a musket primer. It's pretty good size. We need the next item that goes, first thing that goes in the barrel, I have preloaded the charges for Drew. This end contains the powder, which we'll use this as a wad, and the other end contains the shot which I have pre-buffered, and buffering just makes the shot stay together better downrange. Now, would the, would the Civil War soldiers no, have used buffering? Most likely, so no. So we're just using it for the sake of a tighter right. pattern yeah. for it, turkey hunting. It is not a new thing. Uh, the, uh, the old Fallon pieces, which I have one, a flintlock, uh, those guys knew how they dump pow a flour okay. down the barrel to act wow. as a buffering. So you put your powder down first, and you just naturally pour it in, and it will trickle and settle like it's supposed to. And then you would ideally put one of these pre-lubed wads with something like this. You would pre-lube, this would go over the powder, all right? And you can take old dry, have these uh, that you can, but you have to wax that before you use it, and which is no big deal. So you could use either one of those. Now, I don't have any 20 gauge wads. So what we're gonna do is cheat just a bit. <laughs> I've got these real deal 20 gauge uh, wads for uh, about one ounce of shot. And I have pre-lubed this to make sure it goes down the barrel properly. Now as a safety measure, I'm giving Drew this old piece of inner tube. And basically all it is, is when you let the gun is primed and ready to shoot, you put this over the nipple and let the hammer down over the top of it so that the gun can't fire. So that's just kind of a safety feature that I have learned over the years. So with that said, now we're going to back away now and I'm going to physically load the weapon. All right, what we're going to do is, is we'll open the little charge thing here. I'm going to set that paper aside because we're going to use it for an overshot card because I don't have any either. So the first thing we do is we pour the powder in and it will just simply pour down into the bottom. There's 100 grains in there. We're going to shoot one ounce of shot. All right, now you need the wad. So for the wad, we're going to take the ramrod say so we've just pre-waxed this, just going to put it right there, and we will just gently, gently push it down on top of the powder. It doesn't need any pressure. That's all it needs right there. And then we will take the other end of the charge and drop the shot into the barrel. And it, the powder goes with it. That's just a buffering is all that is. It's ground up polyester, if you really want to know. And since we don't have any overshot cards, and the overshot card simply prevents the shot from falling out, 
<laughs> when you're walking around with the weapon. And I'm going to make it fairly thin because we don't want it to blow up in our face when we shoot the old weapon. All right. The weapon is now primed and ready to shoot with the exception of the cap. Now, if you just, I'm going to half cock it. See, the powder's already coming out of the top. I'm going to put a uh, cap on show the, the nipple. Show the pri primer there. I'm gonna, it's, it's just a primer. It's a musket primer. It's fairly big. I'm going to put it over the top of the nipple and put it on. Let me cock it a little bit more. I'll be careful here. Put it over the top, and then I will reduce it to a half cock so it's safe. Okay. All right? So Very good. I'm going to go from here over to a stand that we've put together and shoot a target that Tyler uh, Drew has set up downrange. Okay. I'm sorry, Tyler's his little brother, <laughs> <laughs> and I, I get confused, so bear with me. Uh, so that's a stopping point. Well, you're we'll doing better than me. I can barely re remember my own name. That's a stopping point. We'll walk over here now and set right. up to shoot. Sounds good. Okay, we're all set up to shoot. Um, Drew and I have set up a little target on a tree 25 yards downrange. Um, I'm, like I said, I've never shot this gun. I have shot muzzle loaders and the range on them is not the best in the world. The range is good, the pattern's not that good. So we're gonna see. This gun also has typical iron sights, which, you know, at my age, it's a little bit difficult to see. So a shotgun would have a smooth, you know, just a bead at the end, which would make it easier for somebody like me to see. But I will sight just like I would a rifle. Right, let, me, let me see where the target is. It's this down range there, 25 yards. All right. All right, so we will fully cock the weapon. And I'll go ahead and aim as best I can. Now this is a one-shot deal this today. You're going to get one and that's it. All right, here she comes. Fire in the hole. Fire in the hole. That was it. That's exciting. <laughs> well, let's go check out the yeah, results. Now we got to go see what we got. Drew, I'm impressed. I'm impressed. We got, oh, a half a dozen neck shots. If he'd have bobbed his head in the least, that's, a, that's not a bad pattern for that gun. We were shooting nickel-plated fives, buffered, and at 25 yards, that would be a dead turkey. Yeah. He may flop a bit, but that would be a dead turkey. It's spread a little wide here. Yeah, I don't think I'd shoot much more than 25 yards with it. So there's the challenge, and that's what Drew wants. I admire him for it. Uh, hunting antique, to me, is a great way to hunt. I've, I've loved it for years. Well, and the idea, too, is, is that you know, in Tennessee, we get three turkeys and I would shoot two the regular way and then on the third one the idea would be to force myself to shoot that turkey within 25 yards. I agree. I not so. not to spoil it or to wound it right. but to, to do that. So that'd be the idea. So with this particular pattern I mean I think we can work with that. That pattern is acceptable. There's a kill shot. There's a kill shot. There's two spine shots right there. There's one right here. Yeah. So he, Actually he, there's there's a couple right in here too. Yeah. So that there's enough there to kill it. Yeah. And, you got a couple and if you're not sure, you could always go down and shoot him at his neck of it, the joint of his neck, and you'd get some up here and some in the body. So you've got a little playroom, and with the iron sights, you can beat it in, sight it in like you would a rifle, and it makes it a lot nicer. Yeah. Well, if in 1863, we were fighting in the same platoon. I know we'd be eating pretty good tonight. <laughs> Thanks. Well, we've all learned it the hard way, son. So <laughs> anyway, enjoy showing you. All right, well, thanks a lot for doing all that work, and now we know uh, how to load up a, uh, an old 1863 uh, musket, and uh, hopefully next spring for turkey, uh, I'll be able to shoot one with it.